All right, let's do this. I am Drew with Utah Golden Doodles. We switched it to utahdoodles.com. We also have breedingempire.com and utahreproduction.com. And I hate doing videos like this. But I'm gonna teach you guys all the different ways of artificial insemination for your dog, canine, whatever you wanna say. We've been breeding for a really long time. We own Utah Reproduction. We help a lot of breeders across the state of Utah. We ship a ton of semen. So I'm gonna tell you my very favorite ways to breed and why it just how it makes sense in my mind in ways I think are might be uh, veterinarians conning you out of some money. So let's just talk about it. So the most common style of breeding is with a pipette. So a lot of people use these styles of pipette. If you're gonna use pipettes, these are our favorite kind. And the reason why is the sperm shoots out the sides and there's a little block. So when you're deep in that fornix, you can hit the back wall of the vagina or the fornix and inseminate and the sperm comes out the sides. So you're not gonna have that blockage I hate these kinds that you see on the market where they have a closed end, so it's like a straw. Because if you're inside and you hit that back wall, you have to back out in order to inseminate. But again, it might shock you. These are not my favorite artificial insemination devices. And I'm gonna tell you why. A lot of times over the last five, six, seven years, when we're using artificial insemination devices, it's not very comfortable for the female. And you're not getting that natural pull from the female pulling the semen forward. And I'll explain this. So the vulva of a dog vagina, it's, it's, it's like a triangle and it hangs lower than the vestibule. So basically when you're inserting your insemination device, a lot of people try to just insert it this way and that's actually wrong. You're gonna make that female very uncomfortable. So step one, you have a ton of user air if you're just trying to stick it in the vagina. You have to enter it in at a 45 degree angle, go up into the lumen, and then you're gonna start going over like this and through. So if you don't know that technique and you're just at home trying to breed and you're just kind of sticking it in there, it kind of like, it like shocks the animal and they're not really like ready for the breeding and then they're kind of freaking out and you're trying to hold them. Um, also, a lot of people know how to get inside the vagina, inside the lumen, and then they get stuck and they can't make it past the dorsal. So inside the track of a vagina, there's something called a dorsal median fold that basically is blocking the fornix. So people don't know how to go underneath that fold very well. So they kind of just inseminate in the lumen and it's, it's probably not gonna work. I mean, you might get close. A lot of people will stick their finger in the vagina and they're trying to, there's something in the vagina called the constrictor vestibuli and you're trying to get that constrictor to react so the dorsal opens up. So when you're inside the vagina and that dorsal opens, you can get further in so you'll see a lot of people stick their finger in the vagina and then follow the pipette through it. And again, I just think it's a waste of time. And I'll, I mean, we've been doing this a long time and there, there is a better way. But if you are gonna use pipettes, these are the best, 100%. Look how grippy they are. You can buy them on breedingempire.com or just Amazon or wherever, I don't really care. But look how they're not coming off. And if you have semen in that pipette, it's not coming off. It's really flexible, it's easy, it can go on a lure lock system or just a regular syringe. So if you are gonna do it, buy these ones. Now as far as the length, I like to get the longer one, the 30 centimeter, because you can always, like if you need to get deeper in the track on a standard dog, you're neither gonna get further than this. So I, with a small dog, you can always go in and over and under and say you have that much sticking out. But with a big dog, 
if you're already this way and you need to get this much farther, you can't go in further. So I always buy the 30 centimeter because I think it's like the same price and you're going to be able to breed any size. Now, let's go over another artificial insemination device. So these are my very favorite. I'll cover this next, I guess. They're a newer style of breeding and <laughs> we have a lot of jokes about these, so don't worry about it. But very, you can, these you do have to order to the size of your dog. You can't just use any. So this is a smaller breed, five to nine kilograms. And so you're gonna go in, same 45 degree angle, and we're gonna go in the lumen, and the dog's gonna be sitting like this. But if you watch here, we're gonna create what's called the bulbous gland on a male. And this is how dogs tie together. And when that bulbous gland goes up like this, the female's muscle inside called the constrictor vestibuli will grab that bulbous gland. And you'll see this amazing thing happen inside the female. All around these muscles right here, she'll start to contract like a natural tie. And so she's gonna open her dorsal inside and we can put the sperm, we can connect it right here and it comes out the end. So we can inseminate and the female will suck that sperm forward and she'll act like a natural tie. And you can leave it there anywhere from like five to 20 minutes, like a natural tie. And when you're done, you just release the air and then you pull it back out the same way you came in. This is by far the most effective breeding tool. I promise, I have done every way you could think of. Surgical inseminations, transcervical inseminations. This is the best, because if you can get that female to do her thing and open her body and contract and her back goes up like this, and you can tell the breeding is going really, really, really well. You can get small, small ones all the way up to huge ones for big old dogs, St. Bernard's, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, same thing. They'll grab onto that. There's no way you can get it out. You do your breeding, let it go. Um, but I'll explain that at the end. It's all about timing. And there's cons and pros and cons and all these different things. The, the other form of breeding that we don't preach ever, I feel like it was created for the purpose of an emergency or maybe even a shipment. This is called a transcervical insemination. So this is an endoscope, and we have a light source here. Here's our light source, I think you can see it. Oh, the battery's charging. So here's our light source and handle that sends light through this rod. This is your visual that hooks up to the computer so we can see on the TV. And then this huge long pipette goes through this little piece here and can come out. And so what we do is with air, we can travel down, same breeding. We're going in, up, over, and where that dorsal is, we now can use air to blow up the track. So with this air, I can send air through the pipette and it will blow up her track so we can get under the dorsal. And right where we're at the fornix, we can start seeing the cervix and typically, it's sitting right there. Sometimes it's on the north wall, 45 degree angle. And right when we see that cervix, we can use this pipette, go through the cervix and do a transcervical insemination. It takes some technique, takes some getting used to. We do these on our dogs if we have to. Let me explain. Okay, this is where it gets a little controversial. I believe veterinarians preach this more than anything, especially in the state of Utah, because they make so much money off of this. It's getting ridiculous. It's like $475 to $800 to do a TCI in Utah. And they'll say all these things like, it increases your chances of getting pregnant and it uh, it's more effective because we were able to get through the cervix and 
all of these things, right? I just totally disagree. I believe it's a total scam. I think that they love making the money. And if you do a lot of TCI, it's great. But I just don't think you have to unless, there's a couple things I would do it with. Say you're driving three hours to a reproduction clinic and you just don't have the time, so you wanna do a one and done breeding, yeah, do a transcervical insemination. Say you have a shipment coming in, that's a great time to do a TCI. Say you have a female that's further in the cycle and you didn't know it, then that's the purpose of a transcervical insemination. But where they teach and preach that every single breeding needs to be a TCI, it's just a total hoax. In fact, there's a lot of veterinarians in Utah that won't even offer an AI anymore. They only offer TCI. It's only pay all of the money or nothing. So I don't know, it's getting out of hand. But if you ever come to our clinic, Utah Reproduction, we're never gonna force that on you unless that's something you wanna do. And uh, yeah, we can talk to, we can talk to you about it. But it is what it is. Some people think that's the best way. I personally have been breeding for such a long time. I just know that's not the truth. So let's talk about it. A female, when she goes into heat, typically isn't ready to breed for about 10 to 14 days. Now, sometimes a dog can start estrus but not show any blood. So, I recommend getting your first progesterone test on day seven because sometimes those silent heats where it's not very visual and then they show blood, really that first day of blood is day four. So if you check them on day seven, you could technically be on day 10, 11, 12, 13, but you didn't even know it. And let's say that was the case and your progesterone numbers are sky high, like 20 to 30 range, great time to do a TCI. But if you come in on day seven and do a progesterone test and she's measuring, you know, three, four, five range, you're perfect in the breeding cycle. Like you're tracking ovulation. So what I do is I catch ovulation, the drop of the egg or the birth of the egg or whatever you want to call it. And then I know I have about a 120 hour window to breed that egg, which is roughly four to five days. But when you track ovulation, you don't breed that first 24 hours. You need to let those eggs rest and develop. And then what we do is we breed, say day 11, breed, rest today, and then breed again. That sperm can stay alive in there for about 48 hours, sometimes longer. So that quality semen, if you breed and rest, you get 48 hours of coverage. And then you breed again and you get another 48 hours of coverage. So that is a game changer to our program. And we're getting way more semen coverage, 96 hours of sperm, sometimes longer, those eggs can live longer. And so it's just such a better style of breeding and so much more success. We've had huge success. If you go to Utah Doodles, you can see this is the style we use. I sometimes will use these if I have to travel up to Ogden or if I have to go fast or I need to be somewhere and I don't have my equipment. I have a little box that I can just use these because it's breed, throw them away. But again, you're not getting that natural pull from the female. You're not getting the expression. You're not getting the constriction. And it's sometimes it's really uncomfortable and you're just stabbing around in there. You're trying to get through the dorsal. You know what the freak you're doing. This would do all the work for you, if you're, especially if you're a new breeder. And then as far as TCI goes, I just feel like it's such a funny strategy. Just hear it out loud. They make you come in to do progesterone testing to find out when the dog ovulates. And so the eggs are there. And then they say, well, let's not breed those eggs until the very end of the cycle. Because they'll say something like, the eggs are more developed by then and you have a better chance and they've all had a chance to drop and blah, 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 blah. And then we'll do the TCI. So like, to me, I'm thinking, why are we waiting to the very last day 
to breed and this is supposed to be more successful and I know so many breeders because I am a breeder I'm not a veterinarian and it is a hit or a miss with TCI I promise you the success rate is so much better if you track ovulation and breed correctly and just give it the timing that you need I would never suggest somebody to wait until the very last day to breed those eggs. Also, another thing with progesterone levels is on our machine, say they're at an eight, right around ovulation. The next day, sometimes they can be a 30, sometimes they can be a 20, sometimes they can be a 15, some days they can be a 12. So if a dog drops their eggs and the next day they're at a 30, that does not mean those eggs are 120 hours old. Does that make sense? So when the, the egg drops, that's the timing I'm looking for and then I track it from there. I don't need, if I go from an eight to a 20, I don't need to do a TCI overnight. That doesn't make any sense. The only time I do a TCI is if my first test is a 20, if my first time drawing blood's a 25. But if I'm tracking ovulation and I hit an eight, so I test again the next day and she's at a 17, perfect. That means the eggs were ovulated, we we rose, so it's the first day they can breed. Breed, rest, breed. Two different breedings, it's amazing. One different breeding, if you need to use that same set for another female, you're gonna have awesome success. But I also truly believe that if you can get that female to naturally grab her body will you'll see it her she'll arch she'll start contracting she's pulling the semen forward you're gonna get such a better breeding out of something like this tcis a lot of vets don't tell you this a lot of times they have to give the dog medicine sedate the dog because they're so squirmy i don't blame the dog this is really uncomfortable well, it can be. Some dogs are like, whatever. But you're like putting air in there, you're blowing them up, you're getting in there, and they start kind of like, and you have like vet techs holding the dogs, and there's always like a black table and their palms are really sweaty, and they're just like, they're just not comfortable. You can tell, and the dog is just like, not enjoying it. Um, and I understand the use of it, don't get me wrong but I'm not gonna be the person who preaches TCI, ever. It's not worth it, unless it's emergency. So I use these for years, they're all right, they're okay. I just believe that a lot of people don't know how to get all the way into the fornix. So you mess up a lot. A lot of people catheter, so pee comes squirting out. A lot of people just don't know how to get under the dorsal and the females can be flick, flip, uh, just messing up and flipping around. But I don't think I'll ever go back. I mean, this thing is amazing. I'll put the links of everything down below so you guys can check them out yourself. And then um, we'll do another couple series on stuff like this. So if we ever ship sperm to you, we have 27 active studs. So if we ship it out to you, this is an amazing device to have at your house. Save you so much money at the vet. Bada boom, bada bing. Love it. Now, as far as cleaning these, it's super easy. What we do is we get, oh, let me just show you. We get alcohol. We fill this little thing full of alcohol. We suck it up. We squirt the alcohol through here three times because it's reusable. We clean and sanitize the whole outside with soap and alcohol. And then to clear it, you're just gonna take, take an empty one of these, stick it in, and then you're just gonna go like this. And you can hear all of that being cleared out. And then what we do is we grab just air duster. We put it in the hole right here, spray it. That way we just clear everything out of there and make sure everything's sanitized. But you can reuse this as many times as you want. It's really soft, it's silicone. Um, same, cleaning this, you just squirt the air duster down this little hole so all the stuff can come out of it. 
And but this device, if you get a mini tube one, it's about thirty-three thousand dollars for the whole kit. Only sold to veterinarians. We have a full-time vet, Dr. Coleman, so we can buy products like this. Thirty-three thousand dollars for the whole system. I don't know. We got this endoscope for ten thousand dollars all in. This forty-four dollars, forty-five dollars, fifty dollars. I don't even remember. They sell out really fast. I think we have large ones in stock. These, you know, a dollar to three dollars per pipette. But again, I just don't feel that natural grab. You know what I mean? There you go. That's my spiel on AI devices. And I'll show you them up close. Sorry, I made a mess. So there's that pipe, the end that comes out. These are the ones I really like. You can see the, the ends there. Whoops, sorry. And then this is your TCI. So that's the one we have. All right. We will do another series on whatever you guys want. Just drop it in the comments and we'll keep making videos for you guys.